Imagine a third-person zombie adventure game inspired by Uncharted and The Last of Us where you are this adventurer and your helicopter just crashed into an island full of zombies and you need to figure out a way to get out of this place. Well, this is exactly the game I'm making using Cave 1.2 and the ultimate goal of this game is actually to showcase the engine capabilities because of course here in the studio at Unity Studio we make different games we make mostly cartoonist and stylized game and you guys keep asking me hey Guilherme can you please showcase what Cave Engine is capable of doing and I keep saying well not sure because I'm not an artist <laughs> so I'm trying my best here to put together a great scene a great game to showcase all the features with a more realistic approach and I hope that you guys can have a bigger picture. Again, I'm not an artist, so you're looking at programmer art, but I'm trying my best to make a not so bad programmer art. So I made this character, for example, and try to configure and adjust all the materials and all that, but I had to make this guy from scratch and it was very interesting. For example, the, the backpack, it was hard to make the right scale. I'm not sure if, I, if it is right or wrong, but let me know in the comments. What is important here is that uh, I decided to make this video to showcase this demo to you. I'm, I'm still working on it, you can see, and this video is exactly me working on this environment. And the reason why I'm releasing this video before it's done, it's because today is actually the last day for you to get Cave 1.2 with a great launch discount. So uh, the launch discount has been up for a couple of days already and many people uh, took advantage of it and purchased the engine. And if you're waiting something to buy the engine, maybe you want to see what it is capable of. Well, this is my programmer art to show you. <laughs> and of course, if you're an artist, you definitely can do much better. And it is the last couple of hours to, to get the engine. After that, it will go back to the normal price. And um, I have no idea when I will have a discount again, because the reason why we made this discount is because Verso 1.2 was huge. There was a lot of new things, much better graphics, much better visuals, and of course the terrain system, animation improvements and all that. So I had to make a great launch discount, but the engine is getting solid and stable right now. So I'm not really sure when a next huge new thing will uh, arrive to the engine because for now on, it's just adjustments and quality of life improvements. So make sure that you get your copy of the engine while it's possible. Anyways, I will try to talk a little bit about the engine during this video and also um, mix it up with some time lapses for you to enjoy. I wanted to make this video uh, with not a lot of cuts and initially I don't, do not we even wanted to speed up the time lapse you see in a moment, but I just speed up a little bit because the video will be like half an hour long and I don't want you to waste your time. I want to be straight to the point and then show you how the, the engine and how its power and how the workflow looks like because of course I know that if you are watching this video you probably don't have the engine or you have it and you're watching it anyways and I want to give you a great chance to know the engine a little bit better, see everything that it is capable of doing, how we place objects, how we paint the terrain, how we scoop the terrain how we paint using the newly created geometry paint tool that will be available actually today for you guys. So um, I will go ahead and showcase everything in this video. And you can already start to see in three, two, one, here we go. So this is the game being executed in the editor, as you can see, just as the, um, the previous minutes of this video, you can see the game. And I will stop the game here and we will start working on something. For example, this, uh, this path here, it's a bit obstructed by the trees and the vegetation. It's not clear and I know game design, I know that I need to make a clear path uh, and kind of like gentle in, uh, show the player where he, he needs to go. So I'm trying to work in this right now here in the video. So you can see that I'm using the newly created geometry paint for the engine to paint and erase trees, vegetation and all that. I will also take some, some time to configure the vegetation. Um, I decided to make it again for you guys to see that you can 
add different vegetation, adjust the settings, the spawn, rotation, scale and all that and simply paint to the terrain and it's great. Something that is different in Cave here is that the, the geometry paint actually paints geometry in the engine. It's not like a special case uh, thing. You can literally paint enemies using this tool and it will work. You can paint over a terrain, you can paint over other geometry, you can paint over the geometry itself if you want. Um, and the engine will handle everything as regular entities and this is great. Um, internally, many people asked in the previous video, hey Guilherme, uh, does the engine have instancy and batching? How to adjust that? Can you make a tutorial on how to do this? And the question is, the thing is, you don't need to worry about that. The engine have this and it's all implemented in the back end, so you don't have to worry about it. So the engine automatically detects, oh, okay, uh, you are creating a lot of static objects, they are all the same mesh, the same textures and all that, so the engine internally and silently batches all that for you, uh, instance all that for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So all the optimization is the, in the engine side, so that way you can focus on creating your game and not worrying much about optimization in this side. And I'm still working on it. Many people ask me um, what is my computer because uh, you can see the game is not running at 60 frames per second so you you immediately can think oh my god it's not optimized. Well remember I do have an Intel Core i3 and I have an old GTX 960 card with two, two gigs of RAM. As a matter of fact uh, a real engine barely works in my computer. I've made countless videos about that so the, the default scene in a real barely works barely run because uh, it's kind of a, an old hardware already it's getting old <laughs> anyways so to make like a realistic game with millions of vertices I will confirm here but this scene here in the end of the video is like multiple millions of vertices being handled uh, and it's handling just fine on my old i3 uh, CPU and my old GTX 980 uh, 960 sorry with two gigs of VRAM uh, so it's doing great so I've checked here opened the project again and indeed it's more than 5 million vertices being hindered and this is the worst case so I zoomed out to see the entire map panels um, and in a position that the engine was not going to be able to cool many things so it, it is really hindering most of the the scene and you can see here 5 million vertices in my GPU which is fairly old at this point again. So the engine is doing a lot of things behind the scene. You can even see in the screenshot that it does have like a culling count and all that. Of course it's not very much here because again I did on purpose uh, choose like a position in the scene that it will really try to handle most things uh, and by the way the number of actual geometry in the scene is much larger because every scene everything that you see do have level of detail implemented so the rocks the vegetation actually not all the vegetation now that i'm thinking i think i only added like level of detail in one or two uh, plants so you probably see this during the video if you notice some popping um, because I just added just to see okay I read this and then I forgot about this <laughs> anyways I need to go back and add, add level of details but the rocks for example they all have level of details because this is Quixel mega scans um, I cannot make rocks myself actually a great story about my first commercial game uh, here at Unity Studio it was like almost 10 years ago um, we actually I actually made the rocks myself myself from scratch and after releasing this on, on Steam there, there was a guy and I'll never forget this comment he made a review of my game and he said that my rocks looked like garbage bags and I was like okay <laughs> great anyways this was 10 years ago and this is why now I don't model rocks myself again not an artist but it's good for you to know that you can model yourself if you're good at it or if you're not you can go ahead and download some high resolution next gen Quixel mega scans they are now publicly available uh, through fab and put this in the engine actually most of the vegetation here they are not mega scans but they are um, assets that I've downloaded over the internet so you can create some good looking stuff very quickly even the character I had to modify it a lot in blender but it is a model that I created using a, a human creator tool um, I think I think it's called fuse and it's available on Steam. anyways you can go ahead and use whatever tool you want to create your art create something amazing truly amazing and 
adding parts to the engine and use the engine to build together your game. This is the goal of the engine. The engine is not here to um, substitute Blender or stuff like that. No, they are different software. The engine is here to allow you to create your own game using the assets and everything that you create, you download, you purchase it or whatever. So it is, I need to make sure that the engine is very good at doing this. So this type of test here, it's actually very great for the engine. It's very healthy for it because it allows me to understand very deeply uh, what are the features that are, are missing in the engine, what are the features that are doing great, what needs to be improved and all that. And this all uh, goes down to a conversation that I always say here in this channel that is, well, if you're making if you're making a game and you want to use a game engine, it's better for you to use a game engine that is being created for pe uh, uh, by people that are actually using the engine to actively create games with it. And I know this may sound very funny. Of course, every people that are creating engines to actively make games with it, but it is actually not um, a great example of it. I don't want to put some names all the time because people uh, always find ways to complain about this but a great example is unity for example the unity developers they don't make games now they're trying to make um, i've seen some great news about this lately but they they don't make games they are engine developers so they're there developing the engine and releasing the features for everyone to use uh, which is great but they don't test them as they should meaning they don't test them creating actual games and you may think, oh, of course they do. There's a lot of people using the engine. There's AAA dudes using Unity and big studios. So they will make the feature, they release the feature, and all these guys, all the people using the engine will go ahead and stress test the features. And if there's a bug, there's something wrong, they report and Unity developers, they will fix it. And the same goes to Godot, like the main devs, they're not active, actively using the engine to make games, but of course there's a lot of other devs that uses the engine to make games. So this is not true, you may think about. But think for a second, what you just said or what you just imagined is basically saying that the developers of those engines will create the feature, they will ship this feature untested, raw, very early stages for you, the developer, to go through all the suffering and pain process of figuring out why this feature is good, why this feature is not good, testing, crashing, iterating over and suffering a lot, reporting the bugs. And of course, you're not the developer, the AAA studio or whatever that are using this tool is not the main developer. So they are not actively changing the source code. And even, even if they are like an open source project such as Godot, they don't understand all the millions of lines of code that involves in this uh, engine. And I've made countless studies and I've even talked about this many times here in this channel, um, the power that you have to make huge changes in a game engine um, when you are not the main developer, when you are not the person, the team understanding 100% of the, the code is very limited. So in the end of the day, you are all, all, always limited to report the features and wait for the main developers to fix the features and then uh, release another path or another version of the engine with an iterated version of the feature that you are trying so bad to use and it's clearly broken. And then after all this iteration, all this going back and forth, maybe the engine, the feature is like okay this is decent now but again there's a huge pain process here and this is exactly what I try to avoid uh, to transfer to you as the user of cave engine I don't want you to have this pain I don't want you to have to find bugs or issues that are so obvious that anyone using the engine for five minutes could have found these bugs I'm not saying that you're not gonna find bugs I'm not saying that the engine is um, perfect on every single situation what I'm saying is if you open the engine and if you try to use a feature, this feature should work and not work in, okay, it, the logic behind it, the feature works. No, it should work for you to make good games easily with it because there's a huge difference between something working logically speaking and something working for you to facilitate the game development. And this is exactly what we focus a lot here in Cave Engine. People keep asking me, why do Cave Engine exist? What is your ultimate goal with the engine? Is it like to beat the other engines in the market? No, this is the, the good thing about Cave. 
the reason why this engine exists is because we actually use it actively here in our studio at Unity Studio to make our games. Just like I'm making this game as well, even if this game is mainly specifically made to showcase the engine, this is a commercial game. In the end, I'll be selling this game and all that. So, um, and also the same with the other games and the, 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 the subject about the Shadow of the Colossus inspired game as well that I ended up pivoting to this one. I need to make a video about this and I'll explain why later. But um, anyways, we use this in the engine and we do have people using here in the studio. Uh, we, we, we hire people as we need and we have different projects going on. We have Crawl that is about to get released to the scene. So we use the engine. So if I create a new feature here, for example, the terrain feature, or now the newly created geometry paint that you saw so much in this video, me painting geometry, well, I'm the first guy using it. And then there's the my team, people, that, the designers, the game developers on Unity Studio, they use it. And if it, it is bad, well, guess what? you don't have to deal with the bad side of it because we get to see this first. If it's crashing and if it's not easy to use and if it's very painful, well, I'm the first guy to use it. And of course, you may think, of course, you're the first guy, but this is, the, this is true with the other engines as well. Not really, because one thing, again, is doing a test to see if the feature is logically working. The other thing is actually trying to create a game. For example, here I'm creating a scene for this game, a linear game, again, inspired by The Last of Us, Uncharted, and all that in the linearity of the, the levels. And I'm actually seeing how uh, what works and what doesn't work. And you, as the end user, if you get cave, you not only get like an easy to use engine that is scriptable in Python, super nice, um, and it's like crazy good to make games crazy easy to do, no boilerplate, the engine is super lightweight. Someone asked me, uh, hey, if you create an empty project in this engine and export this and zip, how heavy is this? And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do this. So I checked and it's like less than nine megabytes. It's like crazy. And long term, you guys know this already, I wanna make this under one megabyte. And I'm, I'm going to this direction. So this engine is lightweight, it will run on your machine just fine. And you not only get all these benefits, plus you don't need to pay royalties. It's like a single time payment and the engine is yours. You can create crazy good games with it um, and do whatever you want, sell, get a million, earn a million dollars and spend all this million dollars yourself without even thinking about me. So it's your engine. And not only that, but in the end, you also get something that we actually test here in the studio. Anyways, folks, uh, I'm wrapping up this video here. I'm just finishing up some fine details here before the time lapse ends. Uh, this is the last time, last chance for you to get this engine with the discount. So make sure you enjoy it. And let me know in the comments what you think about all that because I'm very excited to see and talk to you in the comments. My name is Guilherme and I see you next time.